Manchester United officially part ways with manager Eric Ten Hag. How unfortunate. Here we go again. Another manager sees the exit door. Another manager is shown the door by the hierarchy of Manchester United. Another three-year plan rebuild down the drain. Another manager tries to implement something new. It doesn't work out. Another manager gets given money to spend on new players. It doesn't work out. Was the past three years all a waste? Was it a massive waste of money? Was it a massive waste of time? Was the strategic review even then necessary if less than three months later you part ways with the manager anyway? What are Enios thinking? What is the way forward? Let's speak about that. Welcome to the Red Devils then. As you might have seen, social media blowing up. Eric Ten Hag is out of Manchester United. He will not be continuing as the manager of Manchester United. I think this is an absolute embarrassment from everyone involved. And I'll start at the top first and foremost with the Glazers. At what point, I know I sound like Gary Neville, but at what point will they leave Man United alone? At what point will they say enough is enough? We've done enough for the, to this club. I almost said for this club. We've done enough to this club. We've made our money. We've put all the debt on it. Let's pack up and leave. At what point are we going to get rid of the Glazers? We cannot keep blaming the workers on the ground when the bosses at the top just cannot care less about what is happening realistically on the pitch and with that team. The fact that one of the Glazer siblings came in for this meeting, Joel Glazer, in which Ten Hag's fate was decided is absolutely embarrassing and is a wake-up call for all those who were super excited when Enios took over. Took over. That's just the funniest part about it. It was brought to us and given to us as a takeover when in retrospect and in real life it wasn't actually a takeover. It was just a way to keep us fans happy that Enios is going to control the footballing matters. But when it comes to the real matters, guess what? The Glazers are still the shot callers and the Glazers are still the bosses. Now, this is absolutely embarrassing once again because everyone, many people, including myself, were extremely excited and looking forward and fought for Eric Ten Hag, even though we're thousands of miles away from the UK. We support Man United just as much and I support Man United just as much as anyone else that is in the UK attending games. And we all fought for Eric Ten Hag, so much so that after the strategic review, they decided to stick with him. A few months later, he follows the same path of Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, not really Ranić, but Louis van Gaal um, as well. And the unfortunate part about all of this is that all that work that was done realistically has now gone down the drain. That is the most frustrating part about all of this and the most frustrating part and the part that we actually have to be the most realistic and truthful about because in my humble opinion, I think this is the complete wrong move and I don't know who was the final shot caller. I know we have a team of shot callers and Sir Jim was taking his, Sir Jim and I'm assuming Joel Glazer were taking the, the input and information from the team around them but at the end it was probably up to one or maybe two people. Secondly, to blame is Enios. Now, Enios, when they came in, did a good job. They went and got many players for Eric Ten Hag, spent money, did a lot of transfers the right way. Some transfers were a bit questionable, but they did everything the right way, although at some points they did spend a lot of money. I think Enios is also to blame for this because. They were the ones that did the strategic review three months ago at the end of the season. They were the ones that looked at all the options that were available and they were the ones that said that they can't find anyone better than Eric Ten Hag. Now, this is the funniest thing for me. How does all that change in three months? What should have happened was Enio should have sat down and said, we're going to stick with you regardless of what happens. And I think that's what big clubs do. We are really the only club that is still sacking managers so often. Maybe Barcelona is close to us in terms of the really big clubs of the world. Man City haven't sacked a coach in, what, eight years, nine years, almost 10 years. 
Jurgen Klopp left Liverpool. He wasn't sacked. Arteta hasn't been sacked. Who else is our rivals at Arsenal? Unai Emery is going into year three. He's already turned things around at that at that club. Um, Bayern Munich obviously changed manager while they were going through a transition period. Real Madrid, they don't. So that's what I'm saying. Why does it seem like we're still the only big club changing managers like we change shoes or like we ch- change a t-shirt? I think it's an absolute embarrassment. And from the get-go, I think Sir Jim and Ineos and his team should have put their stamp on the club however they could within the means of what the Glazers allowed them to do because that's the reality. They can only do what the Glazers allow them to do. And I think what we have to be extremely mindful of here is that Ineos and Sir Jim, Sir Jim Radcliffe, Sir Radcliffe does not own Man United. Some of us were under the impression that he owns Man United. He does not own Man United. The Glazers own Man United. He has but a share in Man United. And it was hidden behind a smokescreen. It was hidden behind footballing control. This isn't footballing control. If Joel Glazer is flying from the United States to sit into this meeting, why is he needing, needed to be there? I don't know why he needed to be there. But again, if you can, you can tell I'm frustrated. This is very frustrating because here we go again. This is another, another three years wasted. Another manager wasted. Um, more players bought in that will probably be wasted. And where to from here out? The third person I'm blaming, obviously, has to be Eric Ten Hag. The results have not been what we hoped for. The worst start to the Premier League in the club's history. He actually broke his own record of last season. And he is partly to blame as well. He, unfortunately, has come into a mess, like most managers come to. Actually, all managers except except David Moyes. David Moyes didn't necessarily come into a mess, but some argue he started the mess. Anyway, Van Hal, Mourinho, Oli all came into messes, did what they could in the first two seasons. But unfortunately, if you don't get rid of mess, slowly but surely, it does become more and more until you actually get rid of it. I still do put some blame on Eric Ten Hag because unfortunately, maybe this job is too big for him. And I don't mean managing is too big for him. I mean, the job of Manchester United might be or might have been too big for him. Man United is a big club in a mess. They're not a big club, Real Madrid. They're not a big club, Bayern Munich. They're not a big club, Man. They're not a big club, Liverpool, Arsenal. They are big club in a whole lot of big mess. And this is so unfortunate for any manager that comes in. And I personally even think, even if we get Zidane, even if Zinedine Zidane changes his mind and says, I want to come manage Man United, I honestly foresee the same thing happening. I foresee him also struggling at Manchester United. I don't see him coming in and winning three Champions Leagues on the spin. I really do not see that happening because of this big mess. So as I said, I do put some of the blame on Eric Ten Hag because the results have not been good. He has been given his players that he wanted at least 80% of it. They've spent money on him in the hopes that he would create this new system of playing, in hopes that he would create new tactical styles and that we would be competing for Champions League spots and at some point in the near future competing for the Premier League. Obviously, that did not happen. We missed out on Champions League again. Unfortunately, we made it in by the skin of our teeth. And it just becomes a more and more unfortunate, messy, horrible situation that we are in. So that's my third person that I blame um, is Eric Ten Hag. And fourth and last has to be the players. I do blame the players for this. I really do blame the players for this. Now, there's a few ways to look at this when it comes to blaming the players. But unfortunately, the common denominator. Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and now Eric Ten Hag. What is the two common denominators that constantly remain when a manager leaves? Number one, the Glazers. Number two, the players. The players are the biggest issue at Manchester United because we have got a few mercenaries playing for this club. We have got a few players that are still throwing toys out of the cot when number one, they're not picked. When number two, they're not played in the position they want to play. 
when number three, they feel the tactics aren't suited to the way they want to play, when number four, the manager has had a fallout with them, and number five, they feel like they should be in the starting 11 every single week. They feel like it. Not earn it. They feel like they should be in the starting 11 every week. And this is the issue. Why do we... The only story I've heard of player revolt at Man City was when Jao Cancelo left. That's the only time I can remember where there was some sort of issues with Pep Guardiola and Jao Cancelo. Guess what happened? Pep Guardiola was not sacked. Jao Cancelo was sent packing. Guardiola is still at that club. And this is what I was hoping Ineos would come in and do. Maybe it's selfish of me. But what I was hoping that Ineos would come in and do is support Manchester United over player FC. I thought Sir Jim Ratcliffe is a Man United supporter more than the Glazers. I thought he wanted to see this club do well. And to be honest, I actually do not see it. I actually think he might also be similar to the Glazers. Why else would he agree with him? And this is the frustrating thing when it comes to the players. We have too many players in that club, and I've said this before, that are in this team and that have been for this, at this club for too long doing nothing. I made the example, if you're a player like Sergio Ramos, who's winning La Liga year after year, Champions League year after year, in a very, very good, strong team, you can stay at a club for 10 years. If you're another player, which I'm not going to mention so that people don't think I'm player FC or anti-player, whatever. But if you're a player at Man United, you've won and you've won nothing. You've won an FA Cup and a League Cup. That's what you've won in the six years that you've been here. Maybe you've finished second. Maybe you just came in after Mourinho left or you just came in under Oli. What are you actually bringing to the table other than sporadic moments when you take a shot out of the box, outside of the box and you score or sporadic moments when you score a hat-trick once every three years? The problem that I have and the reason why my last factor is blaming the players is because this is actually ridiculous. I think the fact that Enios have again done what the Glazers do and side with the people that actually make the club money, which are the players, is absolutely astonishing to me because clearly the focus is not on the footballing side. Um, I know this video came across as a rant, but I think this is absolutely ridiculous. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This We are back at square one. Three years wasted. Not three years of fun. Not three years of let's try again, let's go again. Three years absolutely wasted and leaves us where? Not even halfway through a season, our manager is gone. Who comes in now? Who's the replacement? If it's Van Nisselrooy, come on. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Sorry if this video came across as a bit of a rant, but this is so, so frustrating. And I'm actually getting tired of it. But let me know your thoughts um, in the comments. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you in the next video.